Why is it important to consider how people interpret our nonverbal communication? It's a very important thing because people need to understand that 80% of you speaking is is nonverbal. And if you don't understand nonverbal communication and you have problems understanding communication, you're not really gonna understand it. The best thing to understand it is to understand both and the reasons why behind it. Um, why is it important to evaluate the use of microaggressions and subsequently address the behavior, our behavior? Uh, it's important because if you don't change the narrative when it comes to the micro, nothing will change in the future as we evolve as humans. And I think that's very, very important. What are some examples of of behavior that um, others might consider to be microaggression. Perfect example of this would be like da daily, like verbal behavior or environmental sites. I, th I think um, communicating, being hostile, those those would be great signs of uh, microaggression. What nonverbal behaviors might communicate the wrong message to others into unintentional? Um, well, the way you say and how you approach something can throw everybody off. You know, not everyone understands the same communication level as let's just say me. You know, if I have a like a previous relationship I used to be in, the girl couldn't understand me. She just was in a different like mindset. So for, for me, I would be the extrovert and she would be the introvert. And later on, it didn't change or anything, but she became more louder or she understood that type of communication better. And I think that's how it should be. You have to learn and grow and grow. And, and the thing is, if, if it's unintentional, but they understand it, that is still communicating. That's important. What are some examples of verbal messages that appear to be to be in the eyes of the speaker, but are perceived by the listener as a microaggression? Just like the example, example I just gave. If I say something, but I say it in a, an aggressive manner, it can, it can come off like I'm meaning something else. So if I say, I'm going to the goddamn store, it could be like, I'm mad because I have to go, or it could be like, I'm upset with something else and I, I don't know how to deal with this, so I'm, I'm going to the store. Like, there's so many ways you can interpret that, and I think that's important to really understand, the, the underlying part, and communication is very important. Um, why might different cultures view the same behavior differently? Well, every culture is different. Like, if you scream at a Latina lady or a mom, she won't attack you, but she'll be like weary. If you do that to a white or a black person, we're all gonna act different. So it definitely changes the narrative. It, it definitely changes the behavior also. Like how I'm gonna respond to you, how you're acting or a person, because a different race and color and culture definitely takes a part in that. Now, if, if someone that's Latino that is in my family, or even I don't know them, were to act a certain way, more or less, I would be like understanding of the situation because it's in my culture. It's easier to understand that type of behavior. How can we improve our culture intelligence to address the use of microaggression? Communication. If we don't communicate what's important between the between the lines, we'll never move forward. That simple as that. How how do mindful and the God damn it! How do mindfulness and mindful communication play a role in addressing the microaggressions? and other forms of racism. Well, the problem is, if you're already in microaggression and you have like this negative attitude towards like cultures or, or you already have like this daily verbal or like energy about you that you just wanna just be kinda negative, like that needs to be changed. It's, it's okay to be that person if you're gonna use it towards the good or the better. That's the end. Later.